Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell before you realise how fucking garbage this content is. If this is not your first time on the channel here, get out of my fucking trash, you absolute raccoon. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. For today's video, we are taking a look at Black Wings. That's right, Black Wings, that deck that nobody has played in like... A million fucking years unless you play Duel Links, which I do by the way. Seriously, Duel Links is fucking great. But you'd have to be absolutely oblivious not to realise that there is a little bit of a cult following behind this deck. And it has had a lot of indirect support in recent years. So of course we're going to take advantage of as much of that as we possibly can. As a quick note before we continue, if you are inspired by this video and you'd like to go out and pick yourself up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles or even Pokemon ones for that matter, check out a link in the description to the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. The link in the description will get you a nice exclusive cheeky discount on their eBay store. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the absolute fucking dung heap. Okay, so before we get started, let me first apologize if there are any loud noises in the background. I have the world's loudest fucking laptop. So occasionally the fans start going like they're clappers and you'll pick it up in the background of the audio. Hopefully they will be able to edit that out nice and tightly for you so you won't hear too much of that nonsense. So again, as a quick note before we continue, this is a Blackwing PK variant. There are plenty of other variants out there that you can try out. I particularly like this one. I think the synergy between the PK cards and the Blackwing cards works quite nicely. And the end result is this deck. Fortunately, this deck has a lot of room for maneuvering. So if there isn't something that you like that's on here, you can definitely go out and change that yourself according to your tastes. So we start off with triple copies of Samoon. It's one of them cards that I absolutely fucking hate, but honestly, you need to play it. It's so, so strong in that it gets you into whirlwind so quickly, but honestly, seeing it late game absolutely fucking sucks. And if you're not using it to get Black Whirlwind out onto the field, it can feel really fucking cloggy, but honestly, you really do just have to play it. We have triple copies of Chris the Cracker Dawn. It's just a free special summon. Unfortunately, only once per turn, but... Really, that doesn't matter too much. Triple copies of Bora the Spear because you can just special summon it for free. It does also do Pierce, which comes up occasionally. But the fact that it's a level 4, the fact that it's a Blackwing, the fact that it's a free special summon, and the fact that it's not once per turn, what's not to like about that? We have a single copy of Zephyros. I know some people prefer to play multiples of this card, but honestly, it just doesn't do anything in your hand. You rather just dump it into the grave or get it into the grave as quickly as possible and go off from there. There could be a case for playing something like Foolish Burial to get it into there, but honestly, I don't think that's necessary in this particular build. Running triple copies of Alster here. Of course, we're playing the Law of Darkness, so banishing lots of cards. This can help you build up your plays from there. But the triple copies of Gale, the free special summon, half in the opponent's attack and defense, comes up surprisingly more than you'd think. And the fact that, of course, it's a tuner and helps you get into all those good plays is something that we absolutely love. Personally, I love to play Panaki the Wax in Moon. I think it's really nice. It's a bit of a, uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Scarm. That one that everybody inevitably forgets. But if you don't, this is a really cool card to have in here. Just the one copy, of course. I don't think it's strong enough to warrant anything more than that. Double copies of Breeze the Zephyr. The fact that you can get a free special summon off Black Whirlwind is really fucking nice. Also, the fact that it's a level 3 really comes in handy as well. We have a single copy of Blizzard of the Far North. This comes up less frequently than I'd quite like. Honestly, I think the whole level thing is a bit more of an issue than anything else. I don't think you benefit enough of it as much as you would if it was, say, a level 3. But honestly, it's still a really cool card. But I think 1 is perfectly plenty. We're running double copies of Harmat and the Dust. The fact that it's kind of got this level modulation thing going on is really cool. But again, you don't really want to see multiples of this card. It's ideal to be able to search this as and when you need it off Black Whirlwind. Not a card that you want to open realistically. So I think double copies is perfectly fine. Double copies of Arishi the Squall is really, really cool. I think that one just isn't enough. Three is too much, so I've settled on two, and it works quite nicely for me. Just changing battle positions, the fact that it's a free special summon, the fact that it's a level one comes up more than you'd think. I think, honestly, this is just a really cool option. A single copy of Caligo Claw Crow. It's searchable. It's a dark wing beast. What's not to like about that? It's just a free fucking extender. And then moving on to our PK engine here, we've got... 
Raider's Wing, which of course falls under that bracket due to the way the card is worded. This is just a free body on board. We then run a small package here. One cloak, one boots, one scale. More than enough to get all your plays going. More than enough for you to benefit from everything. And just give you a lot of options for going first, which you wouldn't normally have as a Blackwing player. And basically our only hand trap in here is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Honestly, I think the deck just does a lot without that. It kind of needs as many combo pieces as possible. And as such, you have to admit being able to sort of interact with your opponent too much in their turn unless you've gone first in that respect. But then triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring hits pretty much every deck in every format in at least some capacity. Then we're running triple copies of Allure of Darkness, like 99% of your deck you can just banish off it. And it doesn't matter because we can get it back with cards like Alster down the line. One single searchable copy of a rank up magic card. This here allows you to go from your Raid Raptor into your Cyber Dragon Infinity. A really, really cool option in here. Nice and easy to set up and it gives you plenty of options down the line. Triple copies of Black Whirlwind. This card is absolutely broken. The only thing stopping this from being one of the most played cards in the game is the fact that it says it has to be Blackwing monsters that you search off of it. A single copy of Call by the Grave, again because it's good being defensive, being offensive, going first or second. I really like this card in either scenario. If this was at more than one, we'd probably run more than the one copy. And a single copy of Monster Reborn, the free extender, we all know how this card goes. And then to round off our PK engine, of course, we have two Fog Blades and a single copy of Shade Brigandine. I think that really this works out quite nicely. You could go for the third fog blade if you're feeling particularly greedy, but honestly, I think two with the fact that they're searchable uh, is is plenty enough, really. And then we move on to our extra deck. We're not doing side deck in here for a number of reasons, but primarily because things change very, very quickly. And there's plenty of videos out there about side deck theory in any given format. So with that mind, we are running straight onto the extra deck. I think two copies of Full Armor Master is plenty. You only need the two. A lot of the time, if you get it onto the board, you can quickly game your opponent. They normally can't recover from it. A single copy of Red Kiri just for popping cards. A single copy of Chidori just for, for pumping the fuck out of it and just smacking through your opponent. Obsidian Hawk, Joe, his name is Joe. What's not to love about that? This motherfucker's fly as anything. Nothing the Starlight is a really cool card for being able to get you additional resources. That's something that we absolutely fucking love. The burn damage really doesn't matter all that much. Your opponent's monsters losing attack and defense can come up a little bit, but the main thing is that additional normal summon. Raider's Knight is really nice and easy to make, and quite easy then you can turn it into Arc Rebellion, which is a really fucking cool option in this deck. We have a single copy of Force Tricks because it's free as fuck. So, so easy to make, part of that cool combo that you can go through, which again, there are plenty of videos out there that discuss these combos that you can use. I won't go into all the details here. And of course, four Strix with the Rank Up Magic card can be turned into your Infinity. Hark of Fibrax, we run plenty of tuners. What's not to like about this? It's just free resources and gives you plenty of options to go down the route of. A single copy of Y Strix, this is usually how you're going to get into that Rank Up Magic spell. It gives you plenty of options. The fact that it's a Dark Wing Beast, it's nice and easy to make in this deck. It's all the good things that you could possibly want. We have a single copy of IP Masquerina for another way to interrupt our opponent during their turn, especially if we go first, this can give you some really good options, including the likes of Nightmare Unicorn, a really good utility card, which can, of course, spin your opponent's cards. And finally, the absolutely broken Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. You already know how fucking strong this card is if you've ever played with it or played against it. Honestly, it's just way too strong not to play in here, and it is pretty much the main reason that we're running the PK engine in the first place. Honestly, if we could play more copies of this, we'd probably run a second one. Maybe not a third. A second would definitely be warranted. But again, whilst it's at one, we're going to absolutely take advantage of that. And that is all for today's video. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to fit to subscribe or absolutely fucking hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, I appreciate you being one of those weirdos who makes it to the end of the video. If you have enjoyed the content, or maybe you've absolutely fucking hated it, you should let me know down in the comments exactly what you think. And if I don't like what you have to say, I'll probably just fucking block you. Seriously though, if this isn't the only kind of content that you like, do stick around. We do other stuff other than deck profiles. It is just a little bit limited at the moment due to the whole thing that's going on in the world that I can't discuss without getting demonetized. We do a lot of how to play content, combo tutorials, all of that kind of good stuff. Seriously though, I do appreciate you making it this far into the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, or hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.